The Battle of Chupong Mountain in its fifth straight day was reduced to sporadic skirmishes. Soldiers of the 1st Air Cavalry Division fled northward looking for a major North Vietnamese supply base believed to be in the area. It's made clear now that yesterday's fighting at the foot of Chupong was the most costly single action of the Vietnam War. American troops walked into an enemy ambush. 300 North Vietnamese were killed in the hand-to-hand -hand and close quarter fighting, but American casualties were high. A major Before yesterday's renewal of the Battle of Chupan Mountain, it had appeared the fighting might be over. During the lull, Dean Brailis filmed a report on the victory won by the American 1st Cavalry Division in the first three days of the battle. It was a hard battle. It was fought six miles from the Cambodian border at an unmarked, uninhabited place the Americans called Line. The riflemen of the 1st Battalion, 7th Cavalry Regiment, were in the thick of battle. The commander of the battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Hal Moore, was the last man to leave the battle. He described the enemy soldier from North Vietnam. We took on uh, a well-uniformed enemy. He was obviously well-disciplined. Uh, they had on uh, proper uniforms, webbing, steel helmets in many cases, with camouflage netting, camouflage in them. They were armed with a variety of weapons from uh, the Bloc countries, Russian and Chinese as well, as well as uh, the other Bloc country weapons. And they were good shots. They used fire and maneuver, and they were a... Uh, they were a tough enemy, but uh, we took them on, and uh, when they wanted to attack, uh, we cut them down. Lieutenant Colonel Moore, who is a West Pointer, described the men he commanded. I have a feeling that if there's one thing that should be taken across to the American people by every news media we have in this country, in the United States, is that we have the best American soldier I think that the world has ever seen. We have the best soldier the world has ever seen. This man is aggressive, he's courageous, he's disciplined, and he'll go. All you've got to do is tell him what you want done, make it clear to him, and he'll perform any job. The battle did not deter one American from bringing a small flag into the fight. Americans were wounded, and some died near the flag. It never fell into enemy hands. The victory marked a turning point in the campaign of the 1st Cavalry to destroy the links in the chain of supply and training centers for North Vietnamese troops fighting in South Vietnam. There are more links to be found and destroyed. This is Dean Braylis, NBC News, with the 1st Cavalry Division. Weary American air cavalrymen, blooded for the fifth straight day in the biggest battle of the Vietnam War, are pushing on at this moment through the jungles of the Central Highlands. It's been a seesaw fight, here a victory, there a defeat on the slopes of Tupong Mountain. Yesterday, North Vietnamese regulars ambushed and cut in two a force of 600 air cavalrymen. One American company, and that could range from 150 to 200 men, was virtually wiped out. But an estimated 300 communists were killed, many in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Some of the dead on both sides were found clutching weapons which had been wrenched from their enemies' hands. After the ambush, the GIs drew back so that the bombers could pound the communists in the middle. We return to ABC's Ray Maloney on the scene for a report of the battle. This is the command post for what is turning out to be the biggest American victory yet in Vietnam. And once again, it's a victory by the 1st Cavalry Division. This command post is commanded by Colonel Hal Moore, the commander of the 1st 7 of the 1st Cavalry. It's a, it's a battle that's been going on. Look, I'm going to find it a little bit difficult to maintain a, a link here, but bear with me because I'll get the facts out. Uh, it's a battle that's been going on now. This is the third day and two nights. And against these men here, probably about 1,500 of them, have been thrown some of the best troops from North Vietnam. We have identified two regiments, at least, of North Vietnamese. They're on the hills behind me.
to my right now. So this is where the air strikes are coming in. This is where the artillery has been coming in. And one single night, 12 tubes of artillery put out something like 4,000 rounds of ammunition. It's pitted and popped that hillside. We have taken a heavy toll on the North Vietnamese. The best estimates, because they still have to be estimates, the perimeter here is very small. We haven't been able to get out and check too closely. The best estimate is that we have killed between 1,000 to put into words, Mr. Maloney, the extremely high regard that I have for the American soldier. He is the best fighting man that I have ever seen. And I would like for you, if you convey anything out of this area where we've been for the last three days and nights, please convey to the American people what a tremendous fighting man we have here. He's courageous, he's aggressive, and he's kind. And he'll go where you tell him to go. And he's got self-discipline. And he's got good unit discipline. He's just an outstanding man, and having commanded this battalion for 18 months, you must excuse my emotion here, but when I see some of these men go out, where they have, I haven't, I can't tell you how highly I feel. They're tremendous. I'll be back. Good evening. Chupong Mountain, Yadrang Valley, remote places, barely visible on the maps of Vietnam. But they are the sites of the bloodiest and longest American battles since Korea. Possibly hundreds of American soldiers have been killed or wounded in five days of savage fighting against regular army regiments from North Vietnam. And the communists, even though they've lost an estimated 1,200 men, launched new attacks tonight against battered units of the U.S. 1st Cavalry Division. The ugliest phase of the battle so far occurred late yesterday when a cavalry battalion on the search for a major communist supply base walked into an ambush. The North Vietnamese struck from all sides in the head-high elephant grass, attacking in waves. U.S. airstrikes helped kill 300 of the Reds, but the Communists in turn killed dozens of Americans. Survivors said they were forced to leave the dead, many of the wounded behind. Some of the Americans died with their hands frozen in rifle-holding positions, but the rifles were gone. The Communists had grabbed them to use against other Americans. Ironically, U.S. reinforcements were not far away but their commander said he had been led to believe that the battalion had the situation well in hand. Another major battle is underway in Vietnam.